everyone it's sean and welcome back to my channel uh I kind of first considered to myself uh should i do a short quick repair video on a speaker you know probably rather boring but in the state of youtube i've learned that the more videos the better uh hopefully this one's still a quality video but anyways uh i already put this on my bench and was testing out this uh speaker goes to my home surround sound system um but uh it's taken a quite a few falls i got a uh a uh, transmission test set hooked up to it generating a 1k hertz tone i'll try to turn the volume up not sure if my speaker will, speaker will uh, catch it whether or not you can hear that 1k hertz tone right now uh, anyways yeah nothing's coming out that was primarily the point of that i guess the sole purpose of that test anyways but uh we're gonna be taking this apart and uh just kind of seeing what's going on with it and you can kind of tell the reason why it fell it's not the first time using uh 3m uh velcro on one side double-sided uh, or whatever type of sticky uh, fasteners, whatever you want to call them. I can't remember. But uh, really not much to this. And a speaker is what a speaker is, although if I shake it around a bit, you can hear it rattling around inside. So hopefully, or pieces at least, hopefully not too significant of a, of a break. Hopefully the speaker is just fine and uh, we can get this repaired. Uh, but uh, anyways, that being said, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel, ooh, that screw might actually be broke. That's probably something that rattling around doesn't appear to want to loosen. But anyways, if you're if you're new to this channel, um, please stick around and watch some other content. And if you like what I have up here, consider subscribing. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not new or whatever and you, you enjoy my videos, let me know by giving a thumbs up. Even those thumbs down in, you, in YouTube uh, Studio, I can still see. Uh, so I, I can at least tell by comparison some of the things you like and some of the things you don't like. Uh, you know, and that's fine. It gives me, it gives me perspective. Uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot of bearing on the types of videos I do because... I mostly just record what what I want to record, uh, and then uh, go from there. Yeah, yeah, as I thought. Ooh, both both of these posts are actually broke. Oh, uh, well, there you go. But uh, let's see if we can uh, get that screw out, and uh, I'll get this a little, slightly more disassembled, and, and we'll come back. Okay, so this speaker came out of a. Akio system uh, HTS 3900 I think home receiver 5.1 uh, surround sound but we've got fully disassembled now and we can see what the actual issue is and uh, essentially our uh, cone or uh, sorry excuse me our speaker coil and our core uh, detach from our magnet here um, and quite a bit of damage on the floor itself. Let's see if uh, now it should be a six ohm speaker, but uh, probably doubtful whether or not we see that, and we don't. So now I could try to straighten this out, and uh, we could perhaps determine where the actual break is on our speaker coil. But there's so much damage to this, uh, I highly doubt, even with glue, that we're going to have a lasting repair. So nine times out of ten is typically just best to replace the speaker, especially if you're using it on a very high fidelity uh, device, which I'm not quite sure I'd call my Akio receiver system home theater receiver system high fidelity or not but we could perhaps see where the break is at uh, i'm going to hook up that transmission test set like i had before and using an inductive amplifier see if we can get audio coming over these wires somewhere perhaps determine where the break is at 
might be worthwhile exploring. Okay, this might be a tad bit hard for y'all to hear. But, uh, so I'll state my inductive amplifier and stick it on this side. Now, 1k hertz tone is rather quiet. But as I go around, it gets louder over on this side. That is most likely where that break is at. It's over right in this area here. Yeah, I can mark that and we can dismantle the speaker a little bit and see what we find out over there. Okay, so here, look, there goes our, our marking on the back of the, uh, on the cone. And we can lift this up sideways and I will focus us in. And we can start checking out the wires here and cycling around. And I'm willing to believe that we will actually find ourselves a break somewhere towards the top where the uh, core has was crumpled over quite substantially. So I'll dig around just a smidge. Um, might be crumpled, but I'm not entirely sure that's a break there. That might be a break. Mostly just looks like crumpled wire. Let's rotate. And continue to rotate. And we'll refocus for a second. And mostly crumpled wire right there from what it looks like. Not entirely sure that's a break. And we'll rotate some more. Yeah, just some dirt or piece of metal, probably from the core on top of those wires. So what do we got right here? Ooh, super crumpled up. And our break might actually be right here. Let's see if I can find it with my pliers. Yep. There it goes. There's our break. Now, I may be able to repair that, but regardless of repair, uh, I'll be replacing the speaker either way. All right, I think we got it that time. Yeah, that's that's together. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle it apart. There we go. Now uh, let's try putting a tone through it again. Well, we can at least check continuity first. And, uh, hey, uh, let me get this out of the light so you can actually see it. Looking to be 5.3 ohms. So we're there. And I'll connect this up. 
Now, in all honesty, before I uh, button it up, you want to just lay this wire and tab it flat down. And we'll get some conformal coating over, over it a bit. I don't want... Uh, don't want the magnet to interfere with it too badly. Kind of just want it to lay as flat as possible and stick as close as possible to the uh, speaker coil without wanting to pop up and go anywhere. Doesn't take much, just a little bit, spreads around. I got this uh, UV mask or conformal coating for relatively cheap from uh, Amazon in a jar this size uh, will last you forever and ever and ever but uh, with that conformal coating on just gonna sit here for a little bit shine the find this light right here on it and uh, let it dry well, with the conformal coating on and how showing right about six ohms, 5.9. If I can get that light off of there for you, up on a digital multimeter, that changed our impedance value a little bit. The problem is, is you have such a tight space or tolerance for the core to recess down into the speaker that um, it, it'll probably end up rubbing. I'll try to put this together as carefully as possible. But, uh, you know, still, it, uh, depending on how well this goes together, it might get a sound out of it, but again, we're gonna end up replacing the speaker. Well, here goes the test, and I'll hold this up to the mic. That scratching noise you hear is me pushing it on our diaphragm here. And you can hear the binding between the coil and the magnet. So obviously a not, not a long-term fix, but as soon as I remove the magnet itself, notice the audio completely goes away. So as it would with a speaker. For those of y'all wondering, the uh, brake was almost 180 out from where we marked on our speaker. Now I would have thought where the brake was at, that's where we would have radiated the strongest since it would have been more like an open antenna. But uh, that did not appear to be the case in this regard. So it'd be interesting to see if I go to repair another speaker, if that holds true with every speaker I repair. Uh, anyhow, well, we two part poxied our post in here. Uh, as you can probably tell by this picture and uh, that should be a fairly decent decent lasting repair barring any more drops from the wall then uh, epoxy the magnet back onto the back of the speaker but as you can tell uh, there is a bit of gap in here because of crumpling on the cone itself uh, or our, our housing um, but uh, we should be able to generate a tone after repairing the wire and etc so let me get this back together and we'll test it out Okay, with the speaker back together, I've got my SIGGEN turned on at 1K Hertz, some low-level audio going through here, but we'll just turn on the SIGGEN and uh, 
you could probably hear that tone. Yeah. For a little lo level audio, I think that's fairly good. I'll now uh, connect it back up to my uh, stereo, my uh, AVR, audio vi visual receiver, and uh, use it again. Now, this is just a simple patchwork uh, until I have the money to uh, afford a, a new speaker and uh, replace what is in here. In which case, I'll probably get rid of all the six ohm speakers uh, that are inside the set that come with the Akio system and probably opt in for uh, eight ohm speakers uh, for each channel. But uh, yeah, as far as a quick fix goes, uh, I would say this is rather successful. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Give this video a thumbs up. And uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye. Mark?